everybody. Welcome back to the cottage. The yurt, which is our cottage. This is um a yurt cast, a podcast, a, a crofting yurt cast, a lifestyle yurt cast. So if you're a first time viewer, thank you. If you're a returning viewer, thank you. And I hope that we have a fun little couple few minutes here together talking about all things crofty and what is going on in my life. So I am just getting back from 11 days being gone. Oh, it feels good to be home. We went to Charlotte to see the Grandies for a few days um, to get a haircut. And then my sister was gonna come back with me, but she had um, a chemo infusion two days before we were supposed to leave and she was too sick. So if you think of her, keep her in your prayers. She's had a really tough year, but she is strong and beautiful and she's going to beat this. Um, but yeah, so I stayed there. Instead of coming back home, I stayed there then when the day we were going to come back up here, we decided to go on up to uh, visit other family. So it has been a long time, a long time since I've recorded. And it feels like a long time since I've been here, but here meaning at the yurt. Um, yeah, we do. We live here full time now. And I know that you regulars know this, but in case there's a new one, and I'm hot, so I'm going to be flipping the hair. This is my second go. I know it's been a while since I've podcast, which is something that I say every time I podcast. So maybe we'll just take that off the table from now on. We know I'm not regular, but um, <laughs> we know I'm not a regular podcaster. I'm not a regular um, YouTuber or recorder, whatever. But I do post a lot on Instagram, so I feel like we can keep in touch that way. So if you follow me there, thank you. If you don't, hop on over and follow me and you'll see most of my makes. I have, I don't think I've recorded since July. So obviously I'm not gonna put bring on everything that I have knit since then. For one thing, I have um, gifted some of it and then um, it would just take too long to hold all that stuff up and talk about it. But, I do, I have pulled a few pieces, and so we will talk about what's in my bags, out of my bags, what's going on, what I've been up to, and uh, just talk about us, baby, you and me. Okay, it's kind of overcast here. It was raining earlier, and so I, um, I'm glad it stopped because I love the the rain on the roof, but when you're recording, it kind of comes across and it's maybe be distracting to some viewers. But I did record last week before I left town, I recorded and it was like an hour long podcast, an hour and 16 minutes is what it said. And I couldn't figure out, I thought, wow, I didn't feel like I talked that long, but okay. I went through all the editing process and I, I really enjoyed it. And then, so I uploaded it, no issues. And then I um, went back to watch, which I never, ever do, ever do. And um, I'm like watching it and thinking, it, it hasn't picked up any of my edits. And then I go through the whole podcast and then it starts playing the podcast over with all of my edits. I was sick, so I took it down and, or I took it from being public. And like, I know some of you had viewed it and then some of you asked where I went and I couldn't even respond to the messages that you left on YouTube because I'd taken it from public to private and so it wouldn't let me respond. So to the new viewers that left a message, thank you. I hope that you've come back to give me another go because that was a one messed up episode. 
but it is what it is. And you know, that's just the woes of podcasting. So here I am. So if you watched that podcast, you're going to see some repeats more than likely. I'm sorry about that. But um, it was, that was one thing I've never experienced in podcasting before. So now from now on, like I say, I never watch it. I will be watching it from this day forward before it goes, before I unlock it and let the public view it because I was mortified. And the funny thing is, so I'd worked all day on it and I was really bummed. And I thought it was like eight o'clock at night. And I was like, I don't even hope I'm going to do this anymore. I think I'm finished podcasting. This is took all day long, blah, blah, blah. And I was looking at how many people have viewed it. Cause in my mind, I'm thinking, Oh, surely not. Hopefully, not too many people have viewed it. And it was like 106 people that had seen it. Some of you, bless your hearts, you gave me a thumbs up. But there was one thumbs down. And when I saw the thumbs down, that made me laugh out loud. I mean, I was just like, someone's worse off than me. Because truly, really, I mean... <laughs> Obviously, something went wrong. Obviously, I'm not a professional. Obviously, this is just a fun little community here where we really don't take ourselves too seriously. And yet, someone felt the need to give me a thumbs down. I, got, I don't blame them. I guess I would have given my, th my I did give myself a big thumbs down until someone else did. And then I became my biggest cheerleader. And it was just like... Some people are just more miserable, and I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if, who would do it? I wouldn't put a thumbs down to a bad podcast. But it could be such a thing as a child did it. I don't know. One time, this is a funny story. One time I had posted a picture of my in my stories on Instagram. I think it was of my grandkids or something. I don't remember. But there was a comment left, and it said, who cares? And I thought, so I responded. I said, am I missing something here? You you can always not follow me. And the lady, I don't even remember who it was now. She was mortified. She said, oh my goodness, my grandkids had my phone. So then we got a big laugh out of it. I mean, she was saying how much she enjoyed my following me. And I, I, then it was hilarious because I could see something like that happening. So maybe it was a grandkid. I don't know. Maybe the, there's not that one miserable person out there that felt the need to put the thumbs down. But in case there is, there's always this little thing that on your iPhone or your on YouTube that you can stop watching. You know, you just hit stop and then you hit the exit button. And you don't, if you follow me, you can unfollow me so that you never have to see my face again. You never have to hear me ramble because I cannot promise you that it's not going to be deserving of a hundred thumbs downs, but I would hate to take the time. I would hate to waste your time by um, you feeling you needed to sit there and finish. So by all means, move on. And me and my little friends, my, me and my little crafty bookie friends, we'll just sit here and we will hang out together and we will pat each other on the back and we will love each other because Doggone it, we deserve it. We are wonderful, awesome people. I shouldn't have ranted on about that, but you know, it's my page. It's it's not my page. It's my uh, it's my channel, so I can talk about anything I want to talk about. <sighs> so this is go to of the podcasting from the last podcast, and I really I think. It was episode number 32, but it could have been episode number 33. So I will put it, this is the episode we are on. How have you been? I hope that you have been doing all the crafty little things that you love to do. I have been doing a lot of sock knitting. I've been going like a maniac since I've discovered the pattern or the, I was inspired by Kate Celine to do the um, spiral tube sock. 
she has a pat the pattern on her YouTube channel or no 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 on her uh, website but um there's also another pattern before she came before she put hers up it's hers are all free patterns so before she put hers up she had guided me to just go google spiral tube socks knitted spiral tube socks and so I'm having the time of my life doing that and I've been taking orders so I'm keeping really busy for the people who are wanting to order from me and have me make them some so they're no no heels I'll talk more about that later. You will love them if you give them a go. But, um, I don't know what else I need to chat about. I did write a few things down this time because I didn't want to seem, um, too scatterbrained. I am in my nook. Okay, so if you know anything about a yurt, you know, they're th this one is 30 feet round. So this is just a little slice of the pie here. Like our front door is right here. And so when you come through the front door, you're gonna just, you just, right? And then this is my nook. And you can see some of my, my fabrics. This is just a small, I've got fabric in cabinets and everywhere, but this is a little bit of my cabinet fabrics. This is some of my yarn back here. Um, this is a basket. I've got baskets hanging from the top. Let me see if I can just kind of scoot this around so that you can see. There's some baskets hanging. There's more fabric. Some of my yarn back there. Some of the paintings I've done. A couple of bags I've made. There's my Ruby Moss Cottage sign. That's the sewing machine. Little trickster there. And yeah, so I'm just sitting here hanging out with my little crafty friends. And I don't even know if I've got that positioned right. But this is where I sit when I'm sewing, um, sometimes knitting. Most of the time I sit back there in the little living area where our TV is and sofa and chair. That's where I, pop, that's where I knit from or craft from. But um this is where I'm going to be podcasting from. So it's just a little teeny tiny spot, but it's filled with all the things I love. There's some, let's see, let's see right here. These are some journals down through the years. I've got more. I just haven't uh, set them out. Some of them are up there, but I'm a big journaler. I have been my whole adult life. Even as a child, I did but I don't have those journals any longer, but yeah, and most of my adult life I've been journaling and they're not really much that anyone would be interested in. Um, it's my therapy. It's, I don't know. I'd like picking them up every now and then and just reading, reading back over my life and how far I've come. I'm, I'm a hot mess, but I'm not what I used to be. So yeah, let's get moving on to uh let's talk about my bags what all is what all is in or out of my bags and um what I've been reading and oh, all settled in grab you a cuppa in my cuppa and this is my cup that was given to me in Norway I know I've talked about it before I have this and this is um new to me I drink the Republic of Tea a lot I usually drink um like they're Blackberry Sage, that is a big one of mine. But this one is called Blueberry Lavender Tea, and I bought that while I was in Charlotte. It is really good. And of course, I've got honey in it. So I hope you grab you a cuppa. I've got um, my leaves from Bath and Body Works burning. That is my favorite fall candle. So my daughter and I snuck in there and got some while I was in uh, visiting. So I've got my cuppa, I've got my candle, I've got all of my makes, and I've got you. What more could a woman ask for? What is out of my bags? Well, what am I wearing? This is the 1979 Raglan sweater by Summer Lee Knits. And um, I'll try to stand up and show you. I did mine stripey because um, I am knitting from stash. I am determined that I've got to get my stash down. 
and I have been knitting all summer from stash, so I didn't have like enough sweater quantity of worsted weight yarn to do this sweater. So I striped it. She actually has a version of striped that I liked anyway. So I striped this. I had everything, everything is from stash except for this stripe right here. And I went down to Tia Dana and bought that. But um, yeah, I am so in love with this sweater. We, a friend of mine, St. Louis, who you've probably heard me talk about before. I met her through the podcast. She lives in St. Louis. No, her name is not St. Louis, but that's what I call her. And she is Twisted Dye Kitchen on Instagram. And she has a podcast. She has an Etsy shop. Very talented. You will want to check her out. I've not seen, I mean, like she does rug hooking. Like she takes photos of things like nature and then she rug hooks and it is to die for. It's She's so talented. She spins, she knits. So it was her birthday in September and as her birthday cast on, we did this. And this is my version of it. Now I did a rolled neckline. It was a boat, it's a calls for a boat neck, but um, Summer does a ribbed and I didn't like the way the ribbed set on my shoulders. So I took it out and just let it roll. Just let the, everything else. I may have made my sleeves um, smaller. I really, she gives you two versions in the pattern and I think I just kind of adapted because I couldn't get gauge and everything was so big. So I just kind of pulled from each pattern and I don't remember the size needles, but it's a great knit. Her patterns are amazing because she, she has a very, very good pattern writer. As a matter of fact, I also have knit her pop radio socks and <clears throat> this is what they're little shorty socks. I, I don't know if the pattern is shorty or if I just made mine shorty, but, and I cannot even tell you what yarn that is. I don't remember. Oh, yes, I do. Is it Twisted Dye Work? I think it's Twisted Dye Work. And then uh, there's little bobbles here. I don't know if you can see them. And I think the bobbles might have just been um, little leftovers that I had. But I wear these a lot. You can see they're, they're kind of worn. But that is, whoops, I'm going to try to put them on the little sock blocker for you. These are called the Pop Radio Socks. And she gives you so many tips in sock knitting. Um, if you go to her Instagram page and um, go to her highlights, she has so many tips. And my sock blockers are from Patricia. Just lovely Patricia. I know you all know her. So, excuse me. That, that's the sock radio sock, the pop radio socks from um, Summer Lee Knits. But you will, she's a great fat pattern writer. I think that you would enjoy knitting her patterns. And she, like I say, she's, she helps you tremendously along the way. If you have, as a matter of fact, I even had some questions about this sweater. And so I just messaged her on Instagram and she got right back to me. And it was, she's, she's really a really good pattern writer, a great designer. She, she, Knits a lot of socks. She has a lot of sock patterns, but she does, I think, she has this sweater. I don't know if she has another sweater pattern or not, but um, this is a great pattern. Very well written. Like I say, you do need to, I had to mess with the gauge a lot. I don't know if that's typical, um, but I, I had to. So, what else is out of my bags? Um, this, I saw my friend, Marta. From Martushka Makes. You have got to follow her. If you do not follow her on Instagram. And then she also has a podcast that oh, I live for. So Marta was my roomie in Norway. And I fell in love with her. She is the coolest person inside and out. But she made this, the Granny Square Capelet. It's by Teal and Finch. And um, hers is embellished real, with really cute uh, crochet flowers right here. And I intend to do that. But this is my version of it. I'm going to try and slip it on for you so you get an idea of what it looks like. Man, is it ever warm. I've not turned the air on today. We, we do not live off-grid. 
So we do have electricity, running water, heat, air, you know, all of that. And so um, I have not turned the air on today and it's warm, layered up like this especially. But this is the Granny Square capelet. And like I said, Marta has some really cool, big embroidered flowers. You can wear it so many ways. I just love it. I think I will get a, to use it a lot up here in the winter and the fall. But yeah, so that's by Teal and Finch. It's the Granny Square capelet and it's really easy to knit up or crochet. This is crocheted. Um, and again, I use stash. Ooh, the fuzzies. I used stash and I am very, very happy with how it turned out. It did not take long at all. It's a big hook, chunky yarn. So that is out of my bags. And then I have, um, I knit a pair of socks. Oh, that was not the best idea, was it? I knit a pair of socks. They're out of my bags. Um, they're already, they're already shipped off. Um, so I'm actually, since I've podcast, I've done several pair of socks that have shipped off. They're the scrappy socks. And when I get into my bags, I will show you what, a pair that I'm working on now. Um, I've also finished this shawl. Now this is the Leah shawl. And I was making it, I don't have my ends woven in yet, I see. I was making it, let me see what this is the, this is the cast on. Oh gosh, got the fuzzies. I'm trying to see where I cast on. This is the cast on edge here. So I use stash for this as well. Isn't that beautiful? I really wish it could show off in all of its beauty. Now it's not so much a shawl, like a hap kind of shawl. This will be more like just a, a wrap, a cozy little wrap. Um, doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't come down real low. But it wraps around, it'll be one that you can wrap around your neck, you know, just to keep warm, keep your neck warm. But this is a gift as well. It was uh, meant to be a prayer shawl and um, for a loved one. And I didn't get it, I, I didn't pack it and take it with me. So it'll be, it'll be finding a home soon. Actually, okay, so the story to this is it was going to be a prayer shawl. Then I was going to meet my girlfriend for her birthday. And I thought, well, I don't have anything to give her. I'll just give her this and make another prayer shawl. Then I, then I found out she couldn't meet up because they needed, they were going away on vacation. So now it's back to being a prayer shawl. <laughs> okay. Whoever I see first is going to get it between the two. But it'll be, it'll, it'll, it's a gift. So that is all I'm going to show you that's out of my bags. Ah, oh, now my nose is going to be itching. So let me get to the socks that I've been talking about. Okay, so I have one finished. So I'm going to put it on the sock blocker. I guess I really need to separate these sock blockers. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put it on both of them. Okay, this, these socks are so magical. This is the newest one. This, I tried to do the, this in autumnal colors, but like I said, there is absolutely no heel to these tube socks. You, There's no front, there's no back, so you just pick it up and put it on. You don't have to worry about, oh, this is, this is the bottom of the sole. You know, like, this is the sole. I make them very long so that they scrunch because I like scrunchy socks and I just assume everybody likes what I like. <laughs> Um, but you can pull them straight up to the knees if you wished. But that is what they look like. And you can see it twists as it goes. So you don't even weave in the ends. I use the clasped weft join. So Google that. 
clasped, weft, C-L-A-S-P-E-D, W-E-F-T, join. And basically, you're just interlocking your yarns, your old with your new, and you knit them into like six or seven stitches, and then you go on with your new yarn and knit. And then when I'm finished, I just go back in and I snip all the, the stringy parts. I do weave in my toe and I weave in my cuff, but that's it. It is so easy peasy. You will want to knit these socks. They are, uh, okay, so like I say, the pattern was inspired by um, Kate Celine. Now she has a free pattern on her website. Um, and then also the one that I'm using, a case might be a little different. I think she does a different toe to hers, but, um, I use Mary Maxim and I think I wrote her name down here so I could tell you, um, is the pattern is by Mary Maxim exclusive needleworks and craft. So it's a free pattern as well, but I absolutely am in love. Now, I knit. I started out knitting on ones, and they were just a little snug. I like snug socks. I can't, they keep my feet warmer. But I was afraid, now that I'm making them um, that for others, that that would just be a little too tight. So I went up to a 2. And then I thought that was too loose. So I've ended up settling on a 1.5. So I knit on a 1.5, but that is... That is your preference. I think the pattern calls for a three, um, but this is a 1.5 US. So there's that. So I've got this far. Ah, I don't want to pull the needle out. I've got this far on the new one. So I've got the cuff finished and I will start, I will start with the orange or the coral. I can't I'll hardly tell what that is. I will start that. I'll be working on those this afternoon. So that is what is in my bags. And I have been carrying this bag. It's by Hook and Gage. And I don't even know if Hook and Gage is still making bags. I've had this for so long. But um, let me get this yarn out so that it doesn't. That's what I'm working on. But everywhere I go, people stop me and ask me about this bag. It's a great autumn bag. And when I say everywhere I go, I'm in coffee shops a lot. So I get comments. And then other people just wherever I'm knitting, they'll say, oh, I like your bag, but I love it too. So that is what is in this bag. As far as knitting, oh yeah, I am knitting this right down here. It is the pajama cardigan. It is by Judy from the Acorn Knits. And this is my birthday cast on with my sister. My sister and I are going to do this one. Now, again, I am trying to knit from stash. So I am not going to be able to do one solid color. I wanted to, goodness knows I wanted to, I just did not have the not enough. This takes a lot. As you can imagine, like a pajama cardigan is kind of, well, it's just kind of slouchy, comfy, you know, cozy. So it's big and roomy. So I am using, as of right now, I have three colors picked out. I have picked this orange from my stash. This looks like brown, but it's actually purple. It's a deep, deep, dark purple. I've used that from my stash. And then I'm using this from my stash as of right now. Now, I might add another color. So it's like a goldy coral and purple. And I'm just going to color block it. But, and I've not gotten very far because, again, the sizing, I could not get my, my sizing right. So... I've only got this far done. Now, I'm gonna take this off. This, I'm I'm knitting on a size six. I'm gonna undo this because I think I want it to be a size seven. I think a size seven is gonna give me just a smidge bigger without it being too big. The next size up just was too big, so I think a size seven will do it. I have knit, I knit this far in the reverse, or no, what had I done? I, I think I'd done orange and orange. And then I thought, no, I want the ribbing to be done in the purple. So I frogged it and I knit this. Now I'm going to frog this and go up a needle size. And I think then I will be happy. So if you want to knit this with me, see, I'm getting ready to frog this. My birthday is this month on the 21st. If you want to knit this with me, feel free. We can just jump in together 
And Judy is actually, if you'll go check her her um, Instagram page, she's actually doing a knit along. And so I'm going to be participating in that too. And I think that goes like through December, the end of December. She's host, it's a knit along with a yarn shop that's in, um, I don't know, British Columbia somewhere, I think. But so it's always fun to knit things with each other, with other little crofters. So that's in my bags and I have, I'm carrying that around in this Atenti bag because there's a lot of yarn in it. And that cute little llama. So I hope you knit that with me. That would be fun. Several of you, I don't know how we've connected. Maybe I put it on Instagram that I was doing, or maybe it was through Judy's, you, you decided to knit it with me. So I'm excited about that. Now, one other thing. I When I was, this nook area, this little croft area has been set up since I since we moved in. This is where I've always been. But I've reworked it. So within the last month, I've painted this wall. Our walls are temporary. The walls that are here are pallet walls. And they are going, that, it's what was here when we bought it. So they're going to come down and we're going to build walls. But, I mean, real structural walls. But right now we're in the beginning, pro, beginning, beginning stages of putting our well in. So this is going to wait until after all that's done and cleared up and I've got my, our front yard's going to be a little bigger, so I've got a mess out there I've got to work with. And then we'll come inside for the colder months and work. But as I was reworking all of this, said all that to say this, as I was working all of this, I found this that I had, I forgot completely about. And I, I started it several years ago. And I was so excited to find it. But it is a crochet project, and it's from the book. It's from this book right here. I don't know if you have this, but it is a great book. I love all things Jane Austen. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been working from a quilt book of hers. But this is The Gentle Art of Knitting. And I... This is the blanket. I'm assuming that this is the blanket I was working on. I love that. And I really wish I had it in those colors, but I don't, and I'm not about to start over. These are pretty, it's just a lot of blue. So these are the squares that I found. And I will be starting this. Now, I don't know if it's going to be um, a blanket or if it's going to be a rug or uh, I don't know or I might go ahead and make so many squares like this and then do some that are white here and then some that are maybe like a burnt orange I might just have a multi look but that was fun to find and I found it in this it was in a basket I a big basket this basket was down in a big basket with all the yarns there and this cute little hook. Everything was just ready to go. So that is in my bags, in my basket maybe, in my bags, in my basket. That's what I'm working on. So when I found it, I thought, okay, I'm going to just do one square a day. And so that day I did a square. Haven't picked it up since. But I want to. I really, really want to because I think I love the pattern. It's beautiful. So that's in my bag bags. That is all that I'm working on right now. I have um, another collection that I'm. It's it's in the making, and it's an exciting uh, adventure that I'm starting. So there will be some, hopefully, the next time I podcast. And at the rate I po I podcast for sure. But um. If, by chance, I would podcast in the next two weeks, there's no way it would be done. But I might have a piece of it finished. Okay, moving from that um, part of the crafty world, let me go on to show you what I have been working on. Okay, so this is my Marsma bag. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on a podcast. And I don't know if you remember on Instagram me posting about it while I was in Norway this fall, this winter, spring. Um, 
But this, my friend uh, Sophia Camelborn from the Camelbornia podcast had one in her knitting bags when we were in Norway. And I fell in love with it. So we adapted a pattern from hers and several of us made some. This was mine. Now, the, the fabric, all the fabric Patricia gave me. So I used her fabrics. The, um, the ribbon that I used, I bought at um, the little yarn shop there at the Selbu Mitten Museum. Um, you, if you follow Patricia, you know she is doing classes from, I don't know if she's actually doing classes from there, but she's doing a Selbu Mitten class. So she shows video of the museum. Okay, they had a yarn shop that, uh, there when I was there. I don't know if it's still there, but that's where I bought the ribbon from. So everything about this is Norwegian. Um, all of these little stitch markers and progress keepers are from the knitters. Then my, what we call ourselves the Nordic niches now. These are from them. This little button is from Sophia from Camelbornia. Um, and then, yeah, I just put all of my little notions. It goes with me everywhere. I really want to make another one, so I just have a couple and so that I can throw them in different bags. But I almost feel like I'd be cheating on my Nordic one. So I don't know. But you embellish them any way you want. Like I've added this little mushroom house because that's what we say we live in, a little mushroom cottage. And I, I intend to um, embroider on this that wraps around. Um, these, the yarns that I have as the cording that secures it are the colors that I used in my mittens, my Trondheim mittens that was Sophia's pattern. So I used that yarn for that. So it's just full of memories, wonderful memories. So my friend St. Louis, for her birthday, we decided we had to make, we had to hand make everything or well, we had to make hand make the gift, and then we could add to it, but we could not store by anything. It had to be things that we had in our stash or from our home. That I made for St. Louis. And she likes orange, and she's got me loving orange now. So you unwind it, and then, voila! Here's her little notions. And I put a few little notions in it. Um, I'm not gonna pull them out because if I know her, she's not tuned out and she's gonna have to have some kind of surprises. But I've embellished hers a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is just fabric I had in stash. So I really, I didn't spend any money. That even all of the, the um, everything that is in here, didn't spend any money, I had it for my stash. So, and then as it sits, there's a, she's a little nature lover too. So there's a little deer that I've done some embroidery work on. So yeah, that has been a lot of fun. So now I've got, which I didn't bring them over here, but I've cut out like three more that I thought, okay, I want to make some as gifts. I, though, do have <clears throat> two more that I'm working on. So this is the beginning steps to it. And I will, um, I still have the little pouch to put on here and it's some embellishment, but you get the concept. This will wrap around there and fasten. So I have two gifts that I'm working on now. These are fun. I'm just doing these with, with yarn, not yarn scraps, with fabric. I just thought it would be fun to patchwork a few more is my, uh, you know, I won't do all of them that way, but um, since I did, I did St. Louis's a mostly oranges because her favorite color is orange. But so these are two that I'm working on. And then I did a quilt, the quilt that you've seen on my Instagram feed. It is finished. It is off to its owner. Um, I made that for my daughter. And so I'm going to insert a picture here that you can see. I wish I, um, had the actual quilt to show you, but I don't. But I did use scraps of fabric from, uh, my mom has a friend who had me come over to her house and pick out all the, take her scraps of fabric that she and her mother had used in quilting. So I did this in using her quilting pieces and I got to take that. When I took it to my daughter, 
I got to go by her house and show her the quilt, the, the lady who gave me the fabrics. And she remembered things that they had made with the different fabrics. It was so sentimental. And she was so touched to get to see her fabrics in a work. So that was, I love things like that. I get all mushy gushy with all that. Oh my goodness, that capelet has really stirred up the fibers. I'm sorry. So that's all I've been doing on the machine, on the sewing machine. I believe, yes, that's it. And let's move into my book bag. I have um, just a couple books. This one, a friend here um, from Watch the Podcast, I had been talking about a book that I was reading. It was a gardening book uh, by a local author. And um, so she said, I think you'll like this book. And it's um, called The New England Gardener. I don't, there's, there, I don't think that's a glare right there. Oh, my light's flashing. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, anyway. E, that's going to give me a shadow. So it's really a year's journal. It's really interesting. I'm reading it as a journal. Like, so like today's October 11th, or I think I'm reading it on October 11th, what they did on October 11th. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. I am really, really, really enjoying this. That was so sweet of you to think of me. It is definitely a classic. Okay, so this was We Are the Lucky Ones, and this is so good. It is about um, a Polish family. They're Jewish, um, and they are escaping Nazism or trying to. So it's their journey through that. Such a good book. We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. I think that that is noteworthy. And that's then this one is um, The Possible World, and it is by Lisa O'Halloran. Schwarz. There. And it is about a little boy who witnessed uh, an awful murder. And then the nurse, not a nurse, I think the doctor that was at the hospital the night he came in. And then an, uh, another lady and how their li their three lives were are woven together. Really good um, book. I, I really enjoyed it. I think you will like that, all the twists and turns that it takes. And then this one is another good one, The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. This is um, a time travel book. And, you know, if you were to say to me, here's a time travel book, read it. I would say that's not my genre. I don't really care for that kind of stuff. But I cannot believe how many time travel books are out there right now. And this one is so good. Um, I've re If you've read, if you know Amber Crawley on Instagram, and that's not her name. I can't remember what her, her name is on Instagram. But she's writing, she has just wrote a series and there's either three or four books. And it's called the Luna series. And it's about time travel. It is so good. You would really, really enjoy that one. But this one is good as well. So, and there's a glare, and I apologize because one of my lights is flickering, but it's The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain, and it's very good, very, very good. So, yeah, that's the books. I'm reading another one now, but um, it's a, it's good, but it's not one, it's one I can read and put down for a day or so, so and read and put down for a day or so. Um, so, yeah, that is all. That's all of my stuff. I did get to go see my niches when we were in visiting, and it was so good to see them. And one of my niches had the most beautiful sweater on that she had knit. And I don't remember the name of it, but she gave me her leftover yarn, and I'm going to knit it. It is a beauty, and I asked her to send me a picture, and she hasn't yet, but if she does, I'm going to put it in here with the name under it because you may want to knit it. It is beautiful. Yeah, it was so good seeing them. We had not seen each other since I moved, and well before that. So we got to sit out on uh, one of the girls' back patios. It was, uh, overlooks a golf course, and we sat there, and she had a fireplace going, and we just knit and talked about the socks. I have them all knitting socks. So yeah, I have everybody knitting socks. So if you love socks, you will love these. If you love to knit socks and you really don't, you're intimidated by the heel, you will love to to, to uh, knit these. Just take my word for it. I promise you will love these socks. But I think 
that's about it. Oh, I've been tie dyeing some sheets. I'd never tie dyed in my life. And our grand our granddaughters are coming up here for a week in November, and I thought it'd be fun to to tie dye some long sleeve t shirts. So I thought well, maybe I better um, kind of test the waters here and do something. So I had some sheets. So I tie dyed the sheets. That was fun. Sheets are hard to tie dye though. They're so big. Um, so I, I've done that. Taken lots of walks. We've done some exploring on the mountains. Um, I love that. That that being out with nature is my thing. So yeah, we've hiked to some waterfalls and we continue to do that every weekend. We really enjoy it. But this this week, this week we go back to Charlotte because it's one of my granny's birthdays. Eleven years old. Can't believe that. But so that is the only trip I have on the books for a couple of weeks. So maybe I will get more knitting done, more reading done. Maybe I'll have some sewing done. I am going to start another quilt because that just, I had, I really enjoyed doing that. So I want to do some more. Um, so one thing about Summer Lee Knit that I didn't tell you, the lady, the girl who designed this, this, um, sweater. She also makes, um, she also has a podcast. So you might want to check out her podcast. Cute podcast. She's, she's just started it. So I think you will enjoy that. Hopefully this gets up. Hopefully there will be no hiccups and hopefully you will be viewing this in a day or two and we will get to spend some time together again. Fingers crossed. Mm, I hope. I'd hate to have to record again because every time I record, I leave something else out and I think, oh, I should have said this. Oh, I should have said that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, be kind. Just be kind, okay? If you have something nice to say, let's just try not to say anything at all. Let's try not to be negative. Let's just try to be encouragers and lover of all humans and the world will be a much better place to live in. So that's all. That's it for me from the yurt. Um, leave your comments. Happy comments. Um, check out my Instagram feed. Follow me here. Sub follow me there. Subscribe here. I'm not active on Ravelry. So my, my advice is if you want to reach out to me, do so either through Instagram or the podcast. So that's it. Just remember that in all you do, take it one stitch at a time. Ah. Sing, you have to sing loud if you're gonna swing me. Oh, oh who are you singing about? We Who's, who's the way maker? I don't know. Oh, you do know. Who's the promise keeper? I don't know. Who is the promise keeper? Uh, Jesus? Yeah. We make a miracle. Stop it! <laughs> no, I'm here! Look here. Silas. Silas. <laughs> oh, he's gonna swing his high sea, baby. Hold him. <laughs> oh. Baby, I want to. Side baby. Side baby. Side baby. Side baby. Side baby. Side baby.